Hey, this is Ed with AtticFoil.com, your complete online source for do-it-yourself radiant barrier foil. One of the most common questions I get all the time is to explain why exactly an air gap is required for radiant barrier to work. And the first thing you have to fully understand is exactly what is radiant heat. Radiant heat is a heat form that travels across either an air gap or a vacuum. And I'm going to give you an example of this. If you go into the kitchen and you stand in front of the oven a few feet away, you feel the heat coming across the kitchen, that's radiant heat. Now if you go up and you put your hand on the oven, you've eliminated the air gap, now you have a solid basically between the oven and your hand, heat flowing into your hand is conduction or conductive heat flow. Now with a radiant barrier foil, it can only reflect heat that's traveling across an air gap and I'll give you an example. If you take a hot skillet and you put your hand several inches above it, you're going to feel that radiant heat coming off of the skillet. Okay? Now, if you take a piece of foil and you pull it tight across the top of the skillet a few inches away and you put your hand on top, you're going to feel almost no heat coming off that skillet. The heat's coming up, it's hitting the foil, it's being reflected back. This is reflectivity. Radiant Barrier Foil has a 97% reflectivity. Basically, it's only letting about 3% of that heat pass through. If you put the foil on top of the skillet, and you put your hand several inches above it, it's working off what's called the emissivity quality. This is the ability not to release heat. And it's basically the inverse of reflectivity. It's only emitting about 3% of the heat. So you can pretty much keep your hand above that skillet all day long. It's never going to burn because it's just not emitting that heat. It's causing that heat to be reflected downward. If you were to take your hand and you put it down directly on top of the foil, now you've eliminated that air gap and now you're back to conduction. That heat's going to flow extremely efficiently from the skillet through the foil and into your hand. This is exactly the same thing as a radiant barrier application in a uh, home assembly. You must have an air gap in order to get either the emissivity quality or the reflectivity quality that you're looking for. Typically a half inch or more is recommended. This is why you can never sandwich foil between two other products. If you do this it'll actually work against you and increase the heat flow through the assembly by conduction. This is another reason why you cannot put radiant barrier foil directly under shingles. The shingles in between the shingles and the roofing felt. It'll actually work against you, make the attic hotter, and increase heat flow into the assembly. Another example is in walls. People often think that they can put the radiant barrier just behind the sheetrock and put it between the sheetrock and the insulation. Uh, this won't work. Insulation is not an air gap. Uh, think of nothingness. Uh, you've got to literally have a void. Insulation technically is a solid with a lot of air in it. So uh, if you're going to do a wall assembly, you've got to create an air gap. It doesn't matter on either side. It's going to work either off of reflectivity or emissivity. Okay, so let's do a quick review. Radiant heat, by definition, is heat that travels across either an air gap or a vacuum. In order for radiant heat to exist, you must have this air gap. If you don't have this air gap, you cannot have radiant heat. If you don't have radiant heat, you can't install a radiant barrier. It just, it just doesn't work. If you sandwich two products together and eliminate that air gap, you have conduction or conductive heat. So hopefully this explains why an air gap is required when you install radiant barrier. For more information on installation pictures, tips, tricks, and to order online, visit AtticFoil.com.